you ever look up at the stars and wonder what life would be like on other planets? Or if there are other planets like ours? Scientists have discovered two new super-Earth planets a hundred light years away, and one might be suitable for life. Welcome back to Space Infinity. Super-Earth. Recently, an international team of scientists discovered two new planets. But these planets are not like just any other old planets. No, these planets are super-Earth type planets. But what is a super-Earth? Is it as interesting as it sounds? Well, super-Earths are a class of planets unlike any in our own solar system. They are more massive than our planet, and yet they are lighter than ice giants, such as Neptune and Uranus. They can be made of gas, rock, or a combination of both. They tend to be between double the size of Earth and can be up to 10 times the mass. This doesn't necessarily mean that they have the exact same composition of elements as our planet. After all, they are exoplanets that exist far outside our current reach. Super-Earth as a term refers only to the size of the planet, meaning bigger than Earth but smaller than Neptune. It doesn't suggest that they are at all similar to our home planet. The real nature of these planets is, of course, a complete mystery, because we have no traces of anything similar in our own solar system. Still, you may be surprised to learn that they are among the most common planets found so far in our galaxy. Over the last few decades, we've discovered all sorts of strange planets that we never knew existed, and that have no analog that we know of in our own solar system. Super-Earths can actually be up to 10 times denser and more massive than Earth, but we don't know enough about them at the moment to tell at what point they could lose a rocky surface. However, in the range of 3 to 10 times the mass of Earth, there could be a wide variety of planetary compositions. There could be snow worlds, water worlds, or planets similar to Neptune, which are composed mostly of highly dense gas. Exoplanets at the higher limits of the super-Earth range can also be referred to as sub-Neptunes, or mini-Neptunes. Discovery So, now that we know what a super-Earth is, let's get back to the discovery that was announced in early September 2022. The international team of scientists, led by Letitia Del Rez, astrophysicist at the University of Liege, Belgium, recently discovered two additional super-Earth-style planets orbiting LP 890-9. 890-9, also known as TOI-4306, or Speculus 2, is a small, cool star that's located about 100 light-years away from our planet Earth, and is the second coolest star around which planets have been located, after the highly famous TRAPPIST-1. This is an immensely important discovery that is published in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics. A first planet, LP890-9b, or TOI-4306b, is the innermost in the system, and was initially identified by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS for short. This is a space mission dedicated to the search for exoplanets orbiting nearby stars. This planet, which is roughly 1.3 times, or 30% bigger than Earth, completes an orbit around the star in only 2.7 days, meaning it orbits the star around 130 times faster than we get around ours. This means that if you lived on this planet, somehow surviving, and were 20 Earth years old, you'd be 2,700 years old. Anyway, the Yu Liege researchers used their ground-based Speculus telescopes, which stands for Search for Habitable Planets Eclipsing Ultra-Cool Stars, to confirm and identify the makeup of this planet. They also used Speculus to probe the system in depth for more planets that could have been missed by TESS. Letitia Del Rez, the FNRS postdoctoral researcher in the Astrobiology and Star Research Units at Yu Liege, explains, TESS searches for exoplanets using the transit method by monitoring the brightness of thousands of stars simultaneously, looking for slight dimmings that could be caused by planets passing in front of their stars. However, a follow-up with ground-based telescopes is often necessary to confirm the planetary nature of the detected candidates and to refine the measurements of their sizes and orbital properties. This seems to be a very important step in the case of highly cold starts, like LP890-9, which let off most of their light at almost infrared. TESS has far less sensitivity for these types of light. Speculus The telescopes of the Speculus Consortium, which are led by Yu Liege and installed in the European Southern Observatory in Chile, as well as at the Tate Observatory in Tenerife, are set up to be able to observe this type of star with extremely high precision, thanks to cameras that are incredibly sensitive in the near-infrared. Michael Gillen, FNRS Research Assistant Associate, co-director of the Astrobiology Research Unit at Yu Liege, and principal investigator of the Speculus Project, explains this further. 
The goal of Speculus is to search for potentially habitable terrestrial planets transiting the smallest and coolest stars in the solar neighborhood, such as the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system, which we discovered in 2016 thanks to a pilot project with our TRAPPIST South telescope, he says. This strategy is motivated by the fact that such planets are particularly well suited to detailed studies of their atmospheres and the search for possible chemical traces of life with large observatories, such as the James Webb Space Telescope. A second planet. The observations of LP 890 9, obtained using Speculus, have proven to be worth it because they have not only helped to confirm the existence of the first planet, but have also made it possible to identify a second, previously totally unknown one. The second planet is known as LP 890 9C, though it was renamed Speculus 2C by the researchers, and it's similar to the other, being 40% larger than Earth. However, as you might expect, its orbital period is longer, lasting around eight and a half days. That's still extremely fast compared to Earth. This orbital period, which was confirmed with the Muscat 3 instrument in Hawaii, places the planet in what we call the habitable zone around its star. Although this planet orbits very close to its star, at a distance about 10 times shorter than that of Mercury around our Sun, the amount of stellar irradiation it receives is still low and could allow the presence of liquid water on the planet's surface provided it has a sufficient atmosphere, explains Francisco J. Pozuelos, who is a researcher at the Institute of Astrophysics in Andalusia, as well as a former postdoctoral researcher in the Astrobiology and Star Research Units at Ulige. This is because the star LP 890-9 is about 6.5 times smaller than the Sun and has a surface temperature half that of our star. This explains why LP 890-9c despite being much closer to its star than the Earth is to the Sun, could still have conditions that are suitable for life. What happens next? From here, there are still many tasks to be completed in order to come to understand the nature of these planets more thoroughly, as well as their likelihood of being able to sustain life as we know it. The research team must now study the atmosphere of this planet, for example, using the James Webb Space Telescope. Of course, LP 890-9C seems to be the second most favorable target in the lineup of potentially habitable terrestrial planets that are currently known. The only collection more favorable are the TRAPPIST-1 planets. Del Rez explains more. This comparison does not, however, consider the fact that LP 890-9C is located close to the inner boundary of the habitable zone and could therefore have an atmosphere that is particularly rich in water vapor which would then boost its atmospheric signals. Moreover, models often differ as to the exact position of this inner boundary of the habitable zone, depending on the characteristics of the star. The discovery of LP 890-9C, therefore, offers a unique opportunity to better understand and constrain the habitability conditions around the smallest and coolest stars in our solar neighborhood, she concludes. Of course, the atmosphere of such a world would still be the most important aspect of its suitability to sustain life, at least such as we understand it. If a planet had a similar atmosphere to our Earth, then that would drastically increase the likelihood that the planet could sustain humans or some other species, if it doesn't already. Professor Amari Triod, who led the team to discover the second planet, said, It is important to detect as many temperate terrestrial worlds as possible, to study the diversity of exoplanet climates, and eventually to be in a position to measure how frequently biology has emerged in the cosmos. So there you go two new super-Earth planets that exists out there in the universe. What do you think? Comment below, then follow the protocol to keep updated. Like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Then head to the Space Infinity Archive for more educational journeys into the vastness of space.